Good morning, friends, and welcome to the Skahoy showroom. In this room, we have a ton of awesome equipment from all kinds of manufacturers, but today we'll be looking at seven Dreamchip Atom 1 Mini Zoom cameras for an eSports event. This is a Dreamchip Atom 1 Mini Zoom camera. It has integrated lens with zoom and iris control, so they are perfect to be used with Skahoy RCPs. These are serial devices, so instead of Ethernet plug in the backside, you have a serial connector for power and signaling. So this is how we control it. This is SDI out going into a video switcher. So these seven cameras are all hooked up to Ethernet to serial converters and then into a network switch and on to the RCP Pro from Skahoy. So on this RCP, we are able to actually control these cameras with a joystick here. So we can see that we have some lens control. It's, it's happening here on the screen, but you see a little bit of stuttering and we'll be looking at how we can set that up because that has to do with the automatic exposure control enable switch right there. Now, if we look inside the software you see here, this is Reactor. Reactor is managing all these cameras. So you see we have seven connections to the cameras right here and they are added to the RCP. We can also, for the convenience of it, see the simulation which basically shows the RCP. So now as I'm pulling the joystick, you can see the effect on the screen. And if I'm holding down the shift key, I'm able to change camera. So the camera selector is up here on the top of the RCP. Unfortunately, I have a camera in one hand and another hand on the shift key. So I'll do it on the screen. Hope you don't mind. So if I press here, you see that I'm changing over to a different camera. And we would be able to, if I had it on the screen here, actually to actually see the shading. Now, unfortunately, this is one of the cameras which is not on the screen, but I promised you that I wanted to change the setting. So the automatic gain control we had on, on the other camera we saw just a moment ago, it's enabled here. That's going to mess with our uh, iris control of the camera. I wonder if it's the same on the other ones. It seems like this is the generic setting on all these cameras, so we should probably change that. Now, there's actually a pretty cool feature I want to show you. I mean, one thing is the fact that an RCP like the RCP Pro is able to shade multiple cameras. This is coming out of the box. You don't need any special license or any additional thing to do. You can just add multiple SM1 Mini Zoom cameras if you want, and then add it to the RCP. And the camera selector is... Um, hidden so it's it's hidden but on purpose you can actually change that around but it's like hidden when you you press down the shift key yeah i can do it in the simulator as one as well by by right clicking and and choose hold down and then as i press these buttons i can now select camera one two three and four now the cool thing i want to show you is that you can pull the selection of cameras together you want to see it so basically i can press sorry now okay so that's the first camera selected i can press and hold and now i have two cameras selected okay Press and hold, and the third camera is selected. Press and hold, and the fourth camera is selected. Now, these are the four cameras, I think, that is on my multi-viewer. So what's going to be interesting now is to see if, let's say that I pull the iris handle. I'll do that right now. I'm actually adjusting the lens on all four cameras simultaneously as I'm pulling the handle on the RCP. It's a little bit funky and kind of out of the scope of what you would normally do. But what you would do is to set settings. So for instance, I can now change the automatic exposure control to be disabled on all these cameras simultaneously because I could select them like that. And now as I'm pulling the handle, you'll see that it's not trying to counter the action of my iris control, which was the case just a moment ago. So what you have already seen is an RCP with multiple camera control, the ability to batch set or to gain control settings in the cameras. And I want to show you as well what is really important here that when you work with a serial camera, which is not directly connected to Ethernet, you have more testing to do, you have more things that can go wrong, more things to be concerned about. But we have tested intensively in this setup to make sure these Dreamchip Atom 1 Mini Zoom cameras are reliably reconnected to the RCP every single time such a thing might go wrong. So let me just show you what we actually did over here. So with the cameras themselves, um, we basically need to make sure that if we power cycle a camera, wait, this is the camera. So I'll just unblock the power here. And one of the cameras is now going out. I, I'll do another one here and then plug that back in and this one back in. We should see that come back to life. That's one thing we want to do. Another thing we want to check is what happens if we take, yeah, because these cables, um, let me see, look at this one. So you have this cable going into the camera and that one, let me see, is this guy, which goes over here and here it splits out. 
one part is the power okay the other part is going over here and into the wave share rs485 to ethernet converter okay so it has a network cable here actually we could try to unplug that and as i unplug it we should see it's disconnecting on the um side of the rcp so that's that's like one thing because this connects to the network and this one has an ip address so this is what we are talking to and that converts all the controlled signals out onto this serial wire which is basically a xlr mini jack that goes into a standard dream chip cable right here so this is uh, two wires and ground connected to this one and um i can also power cycle the unit we should once again lose connection to this one as i plug it in we should see that the camera is uh, reconnecting shortly after replugging it so things to test would basically be let's power cycle the units i'll just do that on another one here so now i've power cycled two units it would be let's unplug and replug our network connections to make sure that if they lose network to the ethernet converter it actually comes back online we want to check that we also want to check over here if we power cycle sorry power cycle the cameras that they come back up and the final thing we want to check is what happens if we take this serial connection out so i'll just unplug this guy and we should see loss of connection to a camera and we plug that back in and now we should see it reconnected so all these things are our concerns when it comes to working with serial cameras we want to make sure that not only ethernet and power loss for the device itself but also the little guy in between another point of failure but there's no way around it if you have a serial camera you need to have some sort of conversion from ip to serial and the wave share converters has turned out to be really really stable they're cost effective and the solution oh actually i need to show you another solution because we have just one variant here and the only thing which is different is that here we are basically only concerning ourselves with the rs485 signal the power itself comes directly from this one now in this special case let me show you this one we actually have 12 volt power going into the ethernet converter and then from this single cable going over to the camera i'm powering this cape this camera on a cable single cable going into the ethernet converter so basically two of these wires will acquire the 12 volt power supply from here this is just you know basically loop through of the input 12 volt and then of course i have serial here so that's a really nice compact solution if you want to go that route it requires a special cable that i'm not sure dreamship has in stock but if you want to go with their standard cables you can do that that's no problem at all but there are actually some um variations you can do which makes your installation of the serial cameras really efficient if you want to know more how this connectivity works go to vikiskahoy.com and then search for dreamchip and we have an article about how you connect your dreamchip cameras to your skahoy rcp the software itself that is found on the serial converters looks like this it's really easy it's basically the standard settings more or less i have been working with here this is how it comes by standard and then in the local ip configuration all you need to do is to set up your ip address and you're good to go so that ip address of the device is essentially what you add to your atom one mini zoom camera so in here you just type in that ip address the port number that you also saw from, from over here this would be right there this port number needs to go into that field you have to use bus id one but hey we have pretty nice descriptions of these things there are different ways you can connect to your dream chip camera so that's also in this drop down but the default tcp serial is the one that you would choose of course there would be different models but the atom one mini zoom is the one we are using in this case and we have these seven cameras just repetitively set up like this um, so super easy to add new cameras you can either add them here or over here it doesn't really matter um, so many ways that's for different videos we've showed that many times so that was dream chip atom one mini zoom cameras used for esports production with serial converters and the single rcp pro controlling all of them with a single joystick and the possibility of gang controlling settings quite exciting isn't it if you want to follow along please subscribe to our youtube channel follow us on social media subscribe to our newsletter whatever you do to follow along with one of your favorite tech companies see you